guys, I'm a little bit nervous because uh, this is my first time talking with Herb Dean, and not maybe first time with Charik, but also he makes me nervous because he he's got one great uh, blouse with with mental on on the top. So, yeah, it, it's my company too. So, too, so. <laughs> uh, guys, welcome, uh, Herb. It's not your first time in Poland, but um, I don't know, second, third, which one? I, I think it's my second time in Poland. Uh, I, I came here uh, before the, uh, I rev worked at a KSW. Uh, it was a good time. Um, I, I got to, uh, I uh, had a stop here, so I spent the day here, and uh, I had a tour guide. They showed me around uh, Warsaw, and uh, then I uh, went up to um, to where was the show? It was a dance, right? Dance, and then I got to see that. So yeah, it was a great trip, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be around here for a few days this time too. Are you going to work at UFC in Prague? Yeah, I am. Uh huh. Okay, so it's connected with this. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, Czarek, uh, you are working with Herb not the first time. Uh, what can you say about him as a, a judge, as a referee? So professional. So, you know, uh, we met uh, for the first time, we met on the KSW show. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned before, and then we started to work uh, for ICB, now ACA. Uh, you know, it's always good for me to, to learn, uh, to ask any questions. Uh, our cooperation is always very good. Uh, of course, we have uh, Lee Doyle and his, his boys, his commission, so it's getting better and better. You know, it's, it's a source of knowledge for me. Herb is always a source of knowledge, uh, so it's all, I'm just all happy to, to do this. Uh, can we say that you are in uh, this, this, about this event, ACA uh, 92, are you a, a head uh, referee, yes? Uh, well, no, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a, the more experienced official, I, I've refereed a lot of fights, but I, I'm a referee just as all the other referees are. Uh, at this event, Caesar is uh, the, the head uh, judge, and uh, I always like working with Caesar and the other Polish uh, officials because the uh, culture of officiating here is really good. There's, uh, they're used to doing a lot of meetings, they discuss situations they come up with tricky situations show them to each other and have discussions so it's always uh, uh, it's always great working with uh, him and any of the other guys from Poland well, what can you say about the mixed martial arts in Poland uh, not only about the fighters but also about the referees and uh, um, the level of the referees our uh, Cezary, Piotr Michalak, Łukasz Bosacki and all well I, I like like I just said I think that the, um, the uh, well, the level of the referee, the officiating is very high because of the culture, because of uh, the communication, and uh, you know the guys have a love for it and respect for their job, so they so they do a good job. They communicate, and that's how people get better, you know. Um, as far as the uh, the level of mixed martial arts, yeah, Poland is one of the top countries of mixed martial arts in the world. You have fighters that fight at an international level. They travel throughout the world. You have you know world champions here. So yeah, it's a it's a high level. Uh, Czarek, uh, does it make you stressed, a bit, a little uh, stressed to work with such a guy like Herb Dean? No, not at all. I'm, I'm, I, I mean, like, uh, maybe I was stressed when I met somebody for the first time, but after five minutes uh, talking with Herb, I just realized that he's a, not only a regular guy, but a very, you know, nice person. So, uh, so no, it's not stress for me. Uh, I think that uh, after so many years uh, as I work as an uh, official uh, in MMA, uh, I, I wouldn't call it stress. It's just you have to be stay, you have to stay focused, and you have to do your thing, and and that's it. So, no, no, I'm not stressed. To me, I'm the one who's stressed. He's, I see him. He's like really quietly ticking off any mistakes I'm making. Like. <laughs> Just joking, you know, it's a, it's a good environment for us. He's good in making a poker face, I know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Herb, okay, um, about, about this uh, work with uh, Polish uh, referees uh, and on, uh, you're uh, meeting with them also in ACA, in KSW, but also uh, in uh, the events that are UFC making. Um, you have a great experience in working as a referee in the cage, and uh, how do you think, what's harder to do, uh, working in the cage, being a referee in the cage, or scoring the cards, the fights uh, outside of the cage? I, I it's hard to say what's more difficult. Um, I think that uh, people don't uh, give the importance or the difficulty for uh, the the uh, judges the, because that's a very difficult job. Uh, with each each job has its own difficulties. With that, uh, when you're in a vacuum, you have three other people and you have a really hard fight. And uh, you know, with, with our our criteria, the way we judge the fight, we're not just counting off, ticking off boxes. You know, it's uh, mixed martial arts is very hard to judge. So you know. A lot of it is as your perception and your instincts and you have to be confident in 
determine that score and you know each of those scores are going to affect people's uh, career and livelihood and send that in I think that's a difficult uh, job each time there well, there's a difficult round you know um, it, you, you're going to be really happy when you have really experienced officials uh, doing that job like, like we have here. Um, fights in the, in the cage, uh, is the difficulty is, you know, each time there's so many different experiences you can have because our sport is so dynamic and it's new. So there's still, even though I've, I've done this for 20 years, I'm going to see something this year for the very first time and have to make a split second decision on how I'm going to interpret this situation. Yes. Uh, Chuck, the same question for you. I think, uh, I, you know, uh, I really like to ref fights, I really like to be inside the cage, but I only do it when there's a need, as I said before, maybe uh, uh, in other uh, interviews, that uh, when there's a need that somebody's getting sick on the, on the last day, or day before the event, I'm, I'm going in, but uh, my job is to be a judge, so I'm just focused on that. Uh, and it's, it's slightly different, so uh, maybe as Herb said, uh, I think that uh, nothing is more uh, difficult than, than the other thing. Um, so uh, I can do both, but I, I prefer to judge fights. Um, I was talking today with uh, Maria Mahmutova and, uh, and she said that for her the most difficult part of being a referee is to uh, don't remember about the emotions during the fight but only staying fair for the fighters that are in the cage. Uh, what would you say what is the difficult, uh, the, difficult uh, the most difficult thing for you by, uh, when you are judging? Uh, judging or refereeing? Refereeing, yeah. Uh, let me think. Um, what is the most difficult thing for me? Um, the most difficult part of it, um, I, I think that, um, there's not any part that's more, uh, difficult than in another, it's just that, uh, when you have, uh, a situation pop up for the first time, you know, just making sure that you, uh, uh, that you slow it down as much as you can so you can get the right decision. Yeah, using all the tools that you have to make sure you are uh, trying to slow the action down as far as for how your decision making goes. And uh, self-confidence, being of confident of your own decisions, um, is it something that you are um, learning with the, all the experience and all those years that you are refereeing or maybe this is something that you have to have to be a good referee? <laughs> well, yeah, I think that you, you know, what's funny is when I, was, when I first started, I was very confident in the decisions I was making, you know, and, uh, and then, you know, the thing about it as an official, you should always watch your work again, and, you know, and then you reach block it and go, oh, okay, I could have done that better. So I think it's a balance, you know, you, uh, you, you have to say, um, you know, well, you know, you know your experience, you've done it, you know you've been there, you've seen it, but at the same time, uh, always uh, trying to look at something and learn and see if you can do something a better way, you know, or uh, say, oh, you know what, if I seen it from this angle, I could have got better information or whatnot. So you're always looking for a way to improve, uh, watching other officials and seeing if they have uh, something that you see that they're doing wrong that you don't want to do, or something that they're doing good that you're going to steal from them and incorporate into what you do, you know, so. Charek, what do you think about it? Yeah, exactly the same because uh, it's very important to watch uh, some, sometimes to watch the fights again, to watch the rounds again. Uh, if, you're, if you're scoring, uh, it's, it's the easiest way to, to learn. Um, but if you're uh, if you're inside uh, as a referee and you're thinking about that you've made a mistake, uh, even if, when, if it's uh, it have you know nobody notices that, but you know that, uh, just just see it again and uh, analyze, I guess. And of course, you can ask colleagues, or you can ask your, your partners in work. So uh, it's it's important to to see it again, from as you said, from different angles. And it's always nice to have uh, uh, when you're scoring the the fights. Uh, it some, sometimes it helps to have a, a little TV when you can see the fights from different angle because you know uh, there's three of us and of, or five of us as here in ACA, and uh, so we got five different angles to see the same situation. I think one of the more difficult things about judging is because when uh, refereeing some of the the criteria and the standards we use are more solid, they're set in stone, you know. So something like for a judging round, it's many of it is what the group of officials have decided is the benchmark or the needle for making certain decisions, especially for something like a 10-8 round. You know, is this what we're going to, and that's, and there's nothing set in stone. A 10-8 round is purely what the 
body, the group of officials have decided is the point where you're going to make that decision. And so um, a lot of times there's a little bit of movement there and the only way to fix it, to get better is that is just more communication between the officials and internationally. The officials in the U.S. talking to the officials here and the officials here talking to the officials in Russia so that we're all on the same page. And that's probably the best thing about uh, mixing the officials internationally because that communication gets to happen. Yes. That's one of the things that uh, I'm really happy about uh, working uh, with ACA is because we've had a lot of opportunities to bring officials from all around the world. Uh, this organization uh, really, uh, I put it, I think, put an investment into the officiating of the sport because uh, Caesar here can see we've. Um, work with officials from Australia, yeah. Brazil, US. US, and Russia, and the top officials, and, and at a lot of expense to bring the top officials together so that they interacted together. And I think that uh, that's one of, the, one of the biggest things that's been done for mixed martial arts officiating, I think. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, mm -hmm. If I see uh, the names of our colleagues from US scoring uh, the you know, championship fights in UFC, you know, that, that explains everything. I was always wondering if um, being a mixed martial arts fighter uh, is a good ground for being a good referee next. You are uh, over your career with, uh, with mixed martial arts, you are fighting in a cage. Do you think that you can be a better referee thanks to this that you understand what they are feeling, what they are doing uh, in the cage? Well, I think, uh, yeah, experience uh, uh, helps. I don't think it's mandatory that you be a mixed martial arts uh, uh, athlete, but I think that uh, training in, in the sport and the techniques that the fighters use and having a detailed knowledge of that is very important, uh, but also uh, competition experience is important. You. Um, yeah, you, you, you've been there, you've experienced some things. The experience, but it doesn't mean you, you know it all because everybody has their own experience in there. You know, some people, every, not everyone's going through the same thing. We're all different people and even though we're doing this event, everyone does it differently. Is it easier for you, Tarek, uh, when you do the um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or, or so on, uh, is it easier for you to score the cards? Uh, maybe, maybe scoring, I guess not, because it, I think that you don't have to uh, have, have any, any experience in martial arts, uh, you know, uh, to score the, the rounds, but uh, as a referee, of course, you, you need that. It's, it's a lot easier. I, I, I don't agree. Well, I don't agree with my friend Tarek. I think that you do have to have uh, experience in the techniques to score the rounds, let's say. Um, you know, because the guys are they're doing a lot of movements that are very subtle and each of those movements are are designed to defend or to initiate so you don't know if someone's on the defensive you have to have that experience to know that guy's on the defensive or uh, know why if that like let's say uh, someone uh, uses a, a, a submission hold and you know I think his experience lets him know how successful it was, even if it wasn't successful completely, he's got to give it credit, because if it was successful completely, the match would be over. Yeah, but yeah. the guy escaped, but due to his experience, he knows, hey, I'm going to give it this much credit because it was that close. And I think someone who doesn't have that experience wouldn't be able to make that decision. I mean, I know what you mean, but uh, I, uh, I said that about more like uh, it's easier, you know, when you're a practitioner, it's easier, but uh, it's not impossible, you know, if you here's, here's an example. Uh, for my referee course, there's some things, submissions, I was, positions I'll show that unless you have experience with the sport, you're not going to be able to spot it. You know, like uh, sometimes like some chokes like Vom flus and things like that. And I'll show that and the guy will actually be unconscious and I'll stop the tape and people don't know because if they don't have experience with that submission, they don't even know it's being applied. And so they don't know that the person on the bottom has been choked out because it looks like the guy in the top is in a guillotine. So you know he takes that experience for granted yeah. but someone who doesn't have that experience would not even know that the guy they, they think the guy who's unconscious is actually winning so there's and there's a number of situations like that so uh, he should give a little bit more credit to the uh, the experience that uh, you know uh, yeah. doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gives him. So that's why I like to work with this guy you know you can always learn something more, even about you. <laughs> every day, every day. Okay, uh, and my last question. Um, when you are in the cage, uh, Herb, uh, what do you think about the fighters? Do you, are, you are a referee and you're the most interesting in uh, having a safe fight, in the safety of the fighters, in, uh, uh, the athletes. But as a fan, are you looking for the fights that are more technical or more uh, giving the people a show when there are a lot of blood and action? 
as a fan, yeah. when I'm watching a fight, I like both. I can see everyone's different. I don't know, I'm I'm really kind of a boring guy to interview in that way because I don't have like my most favorite or this. I'm kind of like an even guy. So yeah, if it's a fight that's very technical, some fights that some people think are really boring, and if there's some uh, some technical play that I saw that was interesting to me, you don't get to see it a lot. It was exciting for me, yeah. even though not a lot happens. Like man, I don't see man that was really interesting. But of course, when someone uh, has a lot of showmanship or it's a flashy fight, I enjoy it all. You know, that's the best sport on earth. So I, I enjoy every part part of it. You know. Sir Clint, what about you? It is the best sport in the world. Yeah, <laughs> I like compacts. You know, I like uh, watching fights when the fighters uh, uh, almost he almost lost, and mm -hmm. he's coming back in uh, in next round or even in the same round. Yeah. Well, we had a situation uh, back in Grozny on the last uh, show. You remember this guy? Uh, I don't remember the name, but I know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was basically he was losing, and yes. after after just after a few seconds, he he you know. Uh, knockout, I yeah, yeah. He, he knocked out his out opponent. opponent. Yeah. And for example, Red, Red Cooper on the last show, he lost mm -hmm. the first round. Uh, in my opinion, it was 10-8 round, mm -hmm. and he but he won the uh, second and third. So uh, I like comebacks. I guess I the most uh, the mostly I like comebacks in MMA. So mm. would you agree with me when I say that in mixed martial arts the most important thing is emotion, uh, emotions that gives you. Sorry, you have have a heart. You have to uh, you know fight it till the end. Mm. So it's never end until it's the end. Yeah, it's one of one of the most important things is the emotion, the heart. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, guys, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you for the talk, and uh, we are seeing each other uh, this evening at ICA 20, uh, 92. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me.